Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always and forever, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because, you know, there's always so much to talk about. And today, well, I've got five Mac tips for writers, every one of which is going to leave us more time to talk about or quite possibly to get on with our writing yeah tell you what no hanging about here we go in no particular well in no particular order except for the last one which i'm keeping to think because i think you might already know it although i didn't for the very longest time here is a 58 keys writing mac tip count up i love this i love this first one beyond all reason really but probably because it kills a problem that irritates me beyond all reason i follow Mac OS Ventura, the latest version of the Mac operating system, it introduced improvements to mail, and they are improvements, except for one. One. It's just disastrous. It's called follow-up. Is that an exaggeration? No, it's follow-up, but disastrous. What's meant to happen, right, is that Apple Mail will spot when you have sent out an email that needs a reply, and it will remind you of this fact after a few days if you haven't had the response you need. Other email services have been doing this for a long time, but then they have a subtly different way of doing it. They make it work. With Apple Mail, for one, you cannot say you want to be prodded about uh, this email message, but not that one. Apple Mail insists on figuring it out for you, and it is always... Well, or I heard a rumour once that it got it right just once, that this follow-up feature, that it correctly prodded someone in South Alaska about an important email to their dentist. That's the rumour. I have doubts. What I get with this feature, what I get most anyway, uh, are follow-up prods over emails that would never need a response. Thanks, I'll write to someone. Now I know I'm British, right, but I do not need people to email back saying, no, no, thank you. Instead, in fact, we get enough. Plus, I'm into this one. The way Apple Mail tells you to follow up something is dreadful. It pops a copy of your sent email into your inbox as if it's now just arrived in the inbox. So every time you see it, until you notice follow up written next to it, you think it's a new email. You think it's someone replying to you and you are wrong. So click on the mail menu, choose settings, then uh, click on general if it isn't already clicked and then look down for that golden Enable message follow-up suggestions and untick it. It is gone forever. And this is bliss. Yeah, I went off on one on that one. This this next one's more fun. Previously on 58 Keys, I have pointed out that to type an accented character on the Mac, well, uh, you hold down the control key, then tap the letter you want, then uh, you say, it takes longer to say it than to do it. You release the control key and you tap the letter again, and there it is. Easy. I believe I even mocked how clumsy in comparison PCs are about this. However, 58 Keys viewer Dave O'Brien knows better than I do. Instead of my way of doing it, well, use his, OK? Simply press and hold on any vowel and you get a pop-up with all the possible accented versions. And all of those versions are numbered. So uh, holding down O gets you this pop-up. Now, tapping on the number three gets you that character. Fantastic. Thank you hugely, Dave. Since you told me that in the comment section below, I have never gone back to my old way of doing it. Love that. Macs come with uh, quite a broad feature called quick actions. I mean, there are a few different quick actions. There's a lot we could talk about with them. But yeah, let me show you this one. This is one that saved me a lot of time yesterday. Um, I, over Christmas, I found a stash of scripts to the TV series Fame from the 1980s. I read a script every day for fun, just, you know, any stash like that to find. But for some reason, none of the scripts are a single document to read. Some of them are divided online into six parts for some reason. But then some are like this, 72 separate documents, which is one scan per script page. Plus uh, this one, To Saw and Never Falter by William Blinn. It was online in an archive, 72 documents, yeah, but 72 separate JPEG images. I don't know how to combine 72 JPEGs into one document, but my Mac does. 
without uh, adding anything or certainly without buying anything extra, your Mac can just handle this. Select all of these JPEGs, right click on the first one, choose Quick Actions, then click on Create PDF, and you're done. A single PDF with 72 pages in order created for you, just like that. Okay, so now I know I don't need the original 72 separate images, not now I've got the, the one PDF that I can actually read, so I can delete them and, you know, delete them by dragging them to the bin or pressing Command Delete, but either of those what they do is they put they put the documents i want to get rid of into the bin they don't get erased yet and actually most of the time that's what i want because i i have regretted binning things and then uh, been able to get them back out but sometimes when i know i don't need them i can delete i mean actually delete the lot immediately by pressing command option delete select the file and then command option delete the Mac will ask you if you're sure, but if you are, gone. Use with caution, okay? But I find I'm often quite tight for space on my Mac, and this saves me some right away. Yeah, no, this is the last tip for today, and it's the last because, well, I mean, you might well know any or all of these tips. You're a Mac user, you're a writer, we spend a lot of time on the keyboard, but this one feels like contender for most well-known, especially if you're used to Windows. But then I've used PCs a lot of time and it, it wasn't obvious to me. You can click to select a document on your Mac and then do Command C, Command V to copy it somewhere, to paste it, to make a copy that you save somewhere else. Is it just me? Why does that seem odd on a Mac? I mean, I'm used to thinking of these icons as being the actual documents. So I'm dragging the documents around like they are actual pieces of paper or something. And, you know, whether it's just me or not, whether it's odd or not, it works. And I tell you what, actually, if that was obvious to you, well, I fully understand and can again only wonder why it wasn't obvious to me for such a long time. But let me offer you a little small addition. Having copied it, you can paste that copied document anywhere. So now pop it into Apple Notes, pop it into an email message. Is it quicker than an attachment? Yeah, it might be. Five Mac tips for writers. There you go. There are more. Obviously, in fact, actually, you and I are going to discuss more sometime, but that's quite enough for one day. So that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself. Eh? It's important. Write more, and I'll see you soon.